What type of telescope setup should you buy first? I get asked this question so much, I'd like to try and answer it simply and effectively. Whether you're a parent looking to buy a first telescope setup for your child, or you're just looking to get into astronomy, I will try to help you drain your bank account and lose all your friends by introducing you to the wonderful world of astronomy. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. This video is sponsored by Bintel. Bintel are the largest telescope dealer in Australia. I work very closely with them, so I'm pretty sure if you told them that you came from this video and you dropped my name, I'm sure they'll look after you. So your first telescope, what should you buy? That's really easy, just buy the biggest, largest and most expensive thing you can find. That's it, hope you enjoy the video. Okay, I'll give you a bit more help than that. But first I should say, there is no such thing as the right first telescope setup. If you buy a telescope and then never buy another telescope, something went wrong. If it was the right telescope, you probably bought another one after that. There is no such thing as the right first telescope setup. So I've tried to break them down into four different types of telescope setups you can get. I'm not going to talk so much about refractor versus Newtonian and all different types and their pros and cons. I'm talking about a first telescope setup and I'm going to list them for you in order of really just buy what you can afford. If you're a really enthusiastic beginner with a lot of money, you might go straight to the fourth category. But let me start with the first one, the simplest one, which is just a telescope on a tripod. This was my first telescope. It's about 30 years old and my dad gave it to me and I discovered Jupiter. It's good enough for Galileo. Obviously they've improved a lot since then and some of the basic styles of telescope will have little motorized trackers and things like that, but they're not computerized. You just point at something and look through it. It's really as simple as you can get. There are a number of different examples of these, such as the Celestron First Scope and the Astro Master series. I'll leave the links in the comments below. So if you're looking for a cheap, introductory option for a child or just casual viewing for yourself I'd recommend just a basic telescope and a tripod. So the next category I'm going to talk about is Dobsonians. Um, Dobsonians are big and impressive some of them even have go-to and computerized mounts and that sort of thing and they have really long focal length. They're great and impressive looking at star parties you'll be the astronomer with the biggest telescope at the party but they're not so good for portability they're a bit of a pain to store unless you've got a collapsible one and really they're not the best for astrophotography so if you think about photography at all I would stay away from Dobsonians in general it can be done uh, but Dobsonians have a few uh, issues with image clarity, chromatic aberration, balancing the camera on the scope, guiding for long exposures they're not ideal for astrophotography but they are okay for visual astronomy The third category, getting a little bit more expensive, are the alt azimuth mounts. These are basically up, down, left, right computerized mounts, uh, otherwise known as fork mounts sometimes, or fork arms, which will point your telescope where it needs to go and track that object in the sky. It's a great first option for beginners, and this is the category I recommend if you are a very interested beginner or you have a child who you think is advanced enough to start picking up those elementary concepts about telescope alignment and getting into learning the night sky in general. These sorts of telescopes can be used for astrophotography, but more for the planetary and lunar, not so much deep space objects, galaxies, and nebula. If you try and do a long exposure with an alt azimuth mount as it tracks an object across the sky, you'll get field rotation. So it's not ideal for that. Depending on the scope that you put on an alt azimuth mount, you can get a pretty decent long focal length and those planets will look great. Examples of good alt azimuth scopes include the Skywatcher 130 Reflector Mini Alt As, but also the Next Star series, so Celestron Next Star. When I recently got back into astronomy as an adult, my first telescope was a Celestron Next Star 4SE, and it's a great little telescope for the price. Um, so the Celestron Next Star and Evolution CPC series, all that style of alt azimuth mount with a, a reflector telescope, and they're great. are looking to get into astrophotography and you have the budget for it and you are very interested 
I do recommend going straight to the fourth category, which is the equatorial mount. An equatorial mount will track things across the sky. It's fully computerized with GoTo and all of that. But as it tracks things across the sky, it rotates the telescope and the camera along with the sky's rotation so that the images you take can be done with very long exposures. Uh, this means you won't get any field rotation at the edges. And you can chuck anything on an equatorial mount. This is a Celestron CGX. I personally like the Schmidt Cassegrains. Schmidt Cassegrains, I think you're a good beginner scope because it does give you that long focal length for things like planets and the moon, but you can still look at nebula and bright uh, galaxies and things like that. It's a good all-rounder telescope, but really anything you put on an equatorial mount is good for astrophotography. These kinds of setups are good for everything from visual astronomy to proper astrophotography to really observatory grade science. It's the most expensive path and the one that will take the most learning initially, but it is very rewarding. If you are getting into astrophotography, you can start with a refractor on one of these. That's one of the long Galilean style telescopes. And those are faster, so you can take shorter exposures. So they're more forgiving for that sort of thing. Uh, but it really is the mount that you need to think about. If you are serious about astrophotography and do want to take those magazine style Hubble looking photos, you really do need an equatorial mount, not an alt azimuth mount. So they're the options. You'll notice it's not really about the style of telescope. I didn't really talk about the differences between refractors and reflectors and Newtonians and things like that too much. It's more about the mount and what you really want to do with the telescope. Which one of these four categories you go for will determine the upgrade path and the expense of your setup. I personally like Schmidt Cassegrains because of their small form factor and long focal length. They're a very good all-rounder and hopefully this all made sense and I'll summarize those categories with examples and links to telescopes in those categories in some sort of of helpful graphic or website link in the comments below. Astronomy is a rewarding and fulfilling hobby that can really change your perspective and broaden your life. It can have an impact on how you relate to science, technology, engineering and maths and really change your life's trajectory. It can be a really life-changing experience to receive a telescope as a child and could plot the course of your life and your interests. I wish you all the best for your astrophotography journey, whether this video was for you or for buying a gift for someone. And I hope it helps you figure out what telescope you'd like to get first. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.